Hello everyone, welcome to Kutish School. So today we are going to discuss about the chapter Biomolecules. So in this chapter there are 12 topics. Okay. So the first topic is how to analyze chemical composition. Okay. And then primary and secondary metabolites. Okay. Bio macromolecules. Okay. Proteins. Okay. Polysaccharides. Okay. Uh, so here we are going to discuss about proteins, polysaccharides, nucleic acid and structure of proteins in detail. Okay. Nature of bond linking okay. and dynamic state of body. Nature of bond linking monomers in the polymer. Yeah, nature of This comes under uh, biology. Yeah. Oh. Monomers in the polymer and then dynamic state of body constituents, concept of metabolism. Okay. Metabolic basis for living, the living state. Okay. And in enzymes, there are. Uh, Six subtopics. Okay. So there are these are chemical reactions. Okay. Enzyme uh, which has high rates of chemical conversions, nature of enzyme action, and factors affecting enzymic activity, and uh, the nomenclature of enzymes, and the yeah, and cofactors. Okay, so uh, we are going to discuss in detail about uh, these twelve topics and their subtopics. Okay. Okay. So first we'll start. Uh, start how to yeah, we'll be knowing how to analyze chemical composition. Okay. So now we are going to discuss about the first topic that uh, the first topic which is how to analyze chemical composition. Okay. Okay. So here uh, if you take any living tissue mm -hmm. or if you take any vegetable tissue or any living tissue, so here uh, and grind it in a trichloric acid. Trichlor acetic acid. Okay, so trichlor this is known as acetic acid. Okay, so when you grind it in a trichloroacetic acid, so there comes uh, with a mortar and a pistol. Okay. Okay. So when you when you grind like that, there comes a slurry like a substance. Okay. So this slurry, a thick slurry is obtained. So when it is stained through cheese cloth or uh, cotton or some material, so here you kind you get uh, two kinds of. Uh, two kinds of uh, substances okay so here uh, two kinds of fractions so here the first one is known as filtrate or acid soluble pool, which is soluble in the acid and the second one is written date or acid in so the second one is written written date or acid insoluble fraction okay it is not soluble in acid so they it uh, sediments so here uh, Scientists have found a number of uh, thousands of organic compounds which are present in acid soluble pool. Okay, so here uh, there are many ways to extract uh, these kinds of uh, molecules or substances from each other. So there are many scientific ways and uh, ways. And in a chemical ch chemistry point of view, we can separate all the molecules and everything. So here, uh, when you see about biomolecules, all carbon containing uh, all all carbon containing compounds from living tissue, it is known as uh, biomolecules. All carbon carbon containing compounds. Okay. So here, uh, although all living tissues uh, living tissue is composed of carbon containing compounds, it also uh, has inorganic compounds. It also has many inorganic compounds. So how can you differentiate between carbon containing compounds and inorganic elements, carbon elements and inorganic elements? So when you uh, burn, mm -hmm. when you burn a tissue or when you burn something, there comes uh, CO2 plus water. So it vaporizes, right? Mm -hmm. So the remaining you will be getting ash. So that, though that ash is composed of inorganic elements. Okay. So, uh, how can you say a body is living or non living? See, a tissue, uh, tissue has all chemical uh, carbon containing compounds. It also has inorganic compounds, but earth crust, it, it also has carbon containing compounds. It also has inorganic compounds. And how can you say, uh, you can say, uh, can you say earth crust is living? No. Or can you say human being is not living? No. Then, so how can you differentiate between them? So in earth crust, these inorganic elements will be higher in amount than the human body. In human body, it will be lesser in amount. Okay. Mm -hmm. So for example, uh, if you take earth crust, mm -hmm. there will be sodium, calcium, magnesium, silicon in higher in amount. Mm -hmm. 
Whereas in human body, it is lesser in amount. It is lower in amount. Okay. So here, which as we uh, ash which we have obtained are fully composed of inorganic elements. So inorganic elements like phosphates, sulfates, and everything. Here, uh, by, uh, by chemistry point of view, you can easily identify aldehydes, ketones, and arom aromatic compounds and everything. Okay. But in the biology point of view, we classify all the compounds into amino acids, mm -hmm. fatty acids, and uh, nucleotide, nucle nu nucleic acids, and uh, with that basis, we classify the biology point of view. So here, if you see an example, inorganic constituents of living tissue, living tissue, what are the inorganic elements? Uh, what are the inorganic elements you are going to see? That inorganic element is present in which form, which oxidation state it is present. That is also we are going to see. So sodium with the plus oxidation state, potassium with plus oxidation state, calcium two plus, Mg two, magnesium two plus, water, NaCl. Water is an inorganic compound, and NaCl, uh, sodium chloride. Calcium carbonate and uh, potassium, so phosphate and sulfate. Okay, so these compounds are inorganic compounds which are present in living tissue. Okay, for example, if you take water, the inorganic compounds they are present in the living tissue. So we'll discuss about uh, how to analyze chemical composition. We'll be discussing some more points in this. So uh, till now you have got an idea that how to classify uh, chemical composition. Yes. In, if you take a living tissue, if you burn it, you will be getting ash which is composed of inorganic elements and uh, if you grind it in a trichloric acid, uh, Cl3COOH, -C a thick slurry will be obtained, so which is strained through cheesecloth or cotton, it is divided, uh, it is, we get two fractions, of, of two fractions, the first one is acid soluble pool and second one is acid insoluble fraction, okay, till now you are clear. So next we discuss about some more points in uh, chemical composition and analysis. So now we are going to discuss about amino acids. Okay. So here amino acids are composed of an amino group okay. and an acid group. So amino group are nothing but which has nitrogen in them. Mm -hmm. It is known as amino group. Okay. And acid group is that it has COOH group in them. Okay. So uh, it is known as acid group. Okay. So these both are present from the same carbon. Okay. okay so it is al it is known as alpha carbon. Alpha carbon. Yes. Oh, the symbol for alpha is that. Okay. Okay. So since these both are present in the same carbon, it is known as substituted methane. Substituted methane. Okay. So the formula of methane is uh, CH4. Since in uh, CH4, instead of hydrogen these groups comes here. Mm -hmm. So therefore it is substituted with it is not a substituted with it. Okay. Amino acid. Alpha amino acid. Yeah. Alpha carbon, it is since it is present in the alpha carbon, it is known as alpha amino acid. If it is present, okay. okay. So there are totally four groups. Mm -hmm. These amino acids are composed of four groups. These are hydrogen, carboxyl group, amino group, and one variable group called R. So according to this variable, variable group, R is nothing but the carbon containing the carbon group, okay? It is an alkyl group, uh, R is an alkyl group, okay? okay? So there are different kinds of uh, alkyl group. According to the type of alkyl, uh, alkyl group present, the amino acids are uh, of different kinds, okay? Protein. So the amino, the amino acids which occur in proteins, Okay, we are going to see examples of them. If hydrogen is present, mm -hmm. okay. so here, uh, yeah, according to the, the so when uh, we are going to see the amino acids present in proteins, okay. so we are going to see examples of them. Okay, so as we have already said, carbon, carbon contains two groups, which is amino group, acidic group, yeah. and hydrogens, and etc. So if this is carbon, if you uh, see this is carbon. So one is one hydrogen. Actually, in methane, carbon ha carbon is attached with four hydrogen atoms. Okay. Okay. So while hydrogen is replaced by this acidic group COH, and the other hydrogen is replaced by NH2 group. Okay. Okay. 
So here, uh, this hydrogen group should be replaced by uh, some alkyl group, but it is not uh, replaced. It is or uh, it is not replaced by any alkyl group, and it has the same two hydrogen atoms. Okay. So the two hydrogen atoms are replaced by COOH and NH2, and the remain, remaining two are present, present as same. So in in the place of this alkyl group. Since hydrogen is, uh, hydrogen is present, it is known as glycine. Okay. Okay. If uh, we have already seen variable uh, with the variable alkyl group, uh, the amino acid differs. Okay. We have already seen that one. So, in the place of alkyl group, H hydrogen is present. It is known as glycine. And in the place of alkyl alkyl group, if methane, that is CH three, is present, it is known as alanine. And in the place of uh, place of alkyl group, if hydroxy metal group group is present, it is known as C-line. Okay. Then what is the for? Uh, this is known as uh, each amino acid. Okay. What is it? Then for R, uh, we do not have any name. R is a representative of alkyl group. Whatever the compound comes with the uh, alkyl group is represented by R. So alkyl groups are generally CH3, CH, uh, the carbon, uh, carbon hydrogen containing group, CH3, CH3, CH2, CH2, CH3, 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 methane, uh, hexane, propane, and everything are known as alkyl groups. Okay, it is a composition of carbons. Okay, so here we are going to discuss some more uh, characters of amino acids. Okay. So here uh, based on number of amino group. And the carboxyl group. Okay. So these amino acids are divided into three: acidic amino acids, basic yes, amino acids, yes, and butyl uh, amino acids. Acidic is also known as glutamic acid. No. Yes. So here, uh, if amino group is present more amount, it is known as uh, basic amino acid. No. More amount than carboxyl group. If carboxyl group is present more than uh, amino group, mm -hmm. it is known as acidic amino acid. If both are present equally, it is known as neutral amino acid. Okay. So, uh, example of acidic amino acid uh, is glutamic acid. And example of basic amino acid is lysine. And example of neutral amino acid is valine. Okay. And uh, aromatic uh, amino acids have some aromatic compounds. They are aromatic rings. So, examples of aromatic amino acids are triosine, phenylalanine, and tryptophan. Okay. So these amino acids have a different, uh, they change according to the pH of the solution. These amino acids, they change their, uh, uh, like, acid hydrogen composition. Okay. So the structure of <coughs> amino acid changes with respect to the pH of the solutions. Okay. For example, if you take this one, mm -hmm. okay, so here uh, a carbon group is at the center, amino group, mm -hmm. carboxyl group, mm -hmm. and an alkyl group. Mm -hmm. Okay, so here hydrogen is gone, so it is uh, here minus charge comes. Okay, okay, and here the hydrogen present amino group is also gone. Okay, so uh, here NH2 becomes to NH2. So these three are interchangeable in different solutions. Okay. So the middle one, that CH, with the carboxyl group uh, without a hydrogen atom and amino group with R, it is known as Witter ionic form. Witter. Yes. Okay. okay. So this is about amino acids. So next we will discuss about lipids. Lipids. Under? Put on less chemical. Yes.